Good morning, everyone. Good morning from Austria. I hope you all can hear me. Um, let me know where you darling from in from. I'd love to uh, know. I wish I could see you all in person, but I can't. Um, we're going to wait um, two to three minutes um, until um, everyone's going to join. And But please chat among yourself or write in a chat. Let me know where you're dialing in from. I'd love to know. Um, and then we're going to start in a couple of minutes. I hope you can all hear me and see me. I'm going to be excited to um, talk to you today about German. I'm going to um, share my screen now. OK. Oh, Edinburgh. Hello to Edinburgh. Hello to North Wales. Edinburgh, what a lovely city. I did study in Scotland. Oh, Australia. Hello, Australia. Oh, far away. I've been to Melbourne, actually. Germany, London, London. Hello, nice to meet you all. Wales, oh, lovely. Hola, Spain. Geneva, oh, so nice to see you all. Thank you for joining. Cambridge, lovely. Okay, very nice. Okay. Oh, Cambridge. Yeah, I did. Oh, Malta. Hello. Lovely. Okay, just wait. Um, we'll wait another minute or so and give people time to join. And then I'll start with my presentation. Manchester. Hello. Very nice. Okay, I think um, that should be enough time. Um, okay, whoa, Norway. Hello. Lovely. Okay, I would say let's start now. Um, good morning, everyone, again from Austria. Um, I'm going to talk about um, is life too short to learn German? Um, my name is Barbara Greff, and um, I've got a PhD in applied linguistics. I teach German as a foreign language to international business people in Salzburg. I work for a business, a big company there. And I also provide intercultural and diversity trainings. Um, today, I'm going to talk about why should you actually learn German? So um, it might not be the most obvious language, but I'm going to give you at least three good reasons why it's a good idea to learn German. Then I would like to continue with the three important verbs, haben, sein and möchten. Then I'll move on to the W questions so you can ask people lots of questions. Then I'm going to talk about the Daddy Das, our articles. Um, most people who learn German will find the articles really difficult. Then I'm going to move on to compound nouns. That's actually a fun part about uh, German. And I call them Lego words. I hope I'm not going to get in trouble for that with Lego. And then I want to continue with the German language quiz. Um, the last two topics will be, I'm going to give you a little introduction to the Austrian culture. Of course, it's going to be not enough time to properly introduce you to the German, to the Austrian culture, but um, I'm going to give you a humorous guideline, what to never say to an Austrian. And then um, the last um, part will be, I'll give you some general advice how to best learn German or maybe any other language you want to learn. Um, okay, so um, if you say to your friends and colleagues, family, um, you want to learn German, um, that first reaction might be similar to um, the, <laughs> this reaction. So I found this on Fluent U, the author said it would be more enjoyable to snort chili powder, hot coals, or stab yourself repeatedly in the tie with a fork um, than um, learn German. I hope after this presentation you don't feel like that, and I hope um, you, I can interest you into learning German. So why would you want to learn German? Um, there are 90 million uh, native speakers. So German is an official language in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Belgium, Liechtenstein and Luxembourg. And there are about 90 million native speakers all over the world. And there are 7.5 million people in 42 countries worldwide and they belong to a German speaking minority. Um, it is also the most widely spoken native language in Europe, and it generally ranks among the language with the most native speakers worldwide. Um, as a second language, it's spoken by about 10 to 25 million people, 
and as a foreign language by about 70 to 100 million people. So if you do learn German, you've got plenty people to talk to. Um, but learning generally, if you speak English or if you're an English native speaker, um, you might find it, um, I wouldn't say easy, but easier to learn German because English and German both belong to the West Germanic group of the Indo-European language family. So uh, there are thousands of words which are closely related and they are known as cognates. So I'll give you some examples, like garden would be garden in German, water is Wasser, apple, apfel, father, vater, banana, banana, glass, glass, milk, milch, guest, gast. So you can see they're very similar and this list could go on forever. Um, but learning German is not only a good idea from a linguistic point of view, but also in terms of economic opportunities because Germany has the fourth largest economic economy worldwide and is the largest European trading partner with the US. Also Germany and Austria um, are home to a large number of very well-known um, brands and corporations such as Siemens, Volkswagen, Adidas, Lufthansa, Red Bull, which is actually here based in Salzburg and Porsche. And if you are not looking for a job, but if you wanna to go to university, it's important to know that in Germany and in Austria, the university is actually for free. Okay, so um, those were three good ideas why you should actually learn German. Now I'd like to actually introduce you to the German language. And I wanna do this by um, introducing three important verbs. So the three important verbs I chose sein, haben and möchten. So I would like to start with sein. Sein means to be and you need to conjugate it, which means every person has a different version of the verb. So ich bin would be I am, du bist, you are, er sie es ist, he she it is, wir sind, we are, ihr seid, you are, plural, if I would talk to you, all, sie sind, they are, and sie sind, you are formal. So sie sind at the end is with a capital S, that's not a random thing, that's the formal way. So um, those of you who speak French or Italian or Spanish, you will know that there is a formal version. So what does that mean? So if I don't know somebody, so if I go to the supermarket or to the restaurant, or if I talk to someone on the street, I don't know, or um, especially when I address an elderly person, I would always use the formal version. So there are two ways, um, you can address somebody in an informal way, somebody's your same age or family, friends, colleagues, and then there is the formal version. So sign to be, I'll give you some examples. Du bist verheiratet. Verheiratet means married. If you wanna ask somebody and turn it into a yes, no question, you simply switch the position of the verb and the subject. So you would start with the verb, bist du verheiratet? Are you married? Du bist aus Österreich? You are from Austria. Bist du aus Österreich? Are you from Austria? Du bist müde? You are tired. Bist du müde? Are you tired? Let's move on to the next verb. Haben. Ich habe. Du hast. Er, sie, es hat. Wir haben. Ihr habt. Sie haben. And again, the formal way. Sie haben. Du hast einen Hund. You have a dog. Hund, again, um, you might recognize this word because it's very similar to the old English word hound. So Hund is dog. If you want to ask somebody, do you have a dog? It would be, hast du einen Hund? Yes, no question. Du hast Kinder. You have children. Hast du Kinder? Do you have children? Du hast ein Auto. You have a car. Hast du ein Auto? Do you have a car? Um, and the last one, I chose as the last one, the verb möchten. Um, my students always find this verb extremely um, useful because it means would like. So whenever you wanna state in a polite way that you want something, you would use möchten. So if you go to a restaurant or if you wanna ask somebody, would you like a coffee? that's the verb you want to use. 
So, ich möchte, du möchtest, er, sie, es möchte, wir möchten, ihr möchtet, sie möchten, and sie möchten again, um, the, the formal way. Um, here the endings are very regular. It's E, S, T, E, and then E, N, T, E, N, E, N. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apart from third person, that would usually get the T, but here it's just an E. Um, I'll give you some example. Barbara, Barbara möchte einen Kaffee. Barbara, Barbara would like a coffee. If um, you ask somebody, would Barbara like a coffee? Möchte Barbara einen Kaffee? Ihr möchtet bestellen. You would like to order. Möchtet ihr bestellen? Would you like to order? Barbara möchte die Schuhe probieren. Barbara would like to try on the shoes. Möchte Barbara die Schuhe probieren? Barbara like to try on the shoes. So once you know those three verbs, you can say quite a few things, especially when you, if you combine them with the W questions. The W questions are called W questions because they all start with a W. So wie, was, wer, wo, woher, wohin, warum, wann. All start with a W. Let's have a closer look at those. Wie would be how. So wie geht's? You probably know this question already. Um, it's the informal way of asking, how are you? We're actually, when we say this, ge geht's, the geht comes from the verb gehen. So we are literally asking, how is it going? Um, the next one would be was. Was is what? Was ist das? What's that? Wer, so wer, I'm sorry for that. That's very confusing for um, English native speakers. Wer is not where, but it's who. So wer ist das would be who is that? And then the next one might be confusing as well because wo is not who, but wo is where. So wo bist du? Where are you? Just a quick, um, um, just a quick um, info on the how you pronounce the W. So the W, word, the letter, the W is not pronounced like the English W, but it's pronounced, it's called labiodental, which means your upper teeth need to touch your lower lip. So when I say W, um, I don't know if you can see it here in the camera, but my upper teeth touch my lower lip. So I would say W, yeah, that's how you pronounce it properly. Um, then we have two more where questions. So when you ask somebody, where are you from in English, you need the where and the from. In German, we take the where and the from and put it together and create one question, yeah? So if you want to ask somebody, where are you from? You say, woher kommst du, yeah? You could also say, woher bist du, which is even, might be even easier for you. But you always need the where from, woher, yeah? On its own, wo is just where. You need woher if you want to say where from. And the next one is wohin. That literally means where to. Those two, you can imagine that woher usually points towards you. So it comes, some, somebody or something comes towards your direction. Whereas wohin is the opposite. Yeah, it goes away from you. So if somebody, if I could see you right now, but one of you would stood up and leave, I would say, where are you, wohin gehst du? Where are you going to, literally? And the last two are warum and wann. Warum is why. Warum lernst du Deutsch? People might ask you that question. If you start learning German, why you learn in German? Lernst is lernen, that means to learn. Wann, wann hast du Zeit? When do you have time, yeah? If you combine those two questions now, the, the, those questions, the W questions and the verbs now, you can say quite a few things. So, woher bist du? Where are you from? Wer ist das? Who is this? Wo bist du? Where are you? Was möchtest du? What would you like? So, if you know the Ws and those three verbs, that's already half the battle. You basically speak German. Um, one thing that most people find difficult about the German language are the articles. So in German, all nouns are capitalized, yeah? So every person, place and thing is capitalized. That's not a random thing when you read a German text. There is a clear rule behind that. So every noun 
is capitalized plus every noun has a gender. So most people probably feel like a Sandra Bullock when they need to um, choose um, Daddy Das, but there are clear rules behind that. So um, it's not, it has nothing to do with the thing itself. So a pen it doesn't have the masculine there because of how it looks. It has to do um, with the word itself. So some rules are that all men are always there. Same for jobs. So a male doctor would be der Arzt, whereas a female doctor would be die Ärztin. Um, another rule is that all alcoholic drinks are always masculine. So der Whisky, der Wein, der Schnaps, der Gin. Whereas there's one exception, and that's beer. Beer is um, das, das Bier. All weekdays, so der Montag, der Dienstag, der Samstag, always masculine. All month, der August, der Oktober, der November. Jahreszeiten, Jahreszeiten means seasons. So der Sommer, der Winter, der Herbst, always masculine. And there are certain endings like Ismus, for example, Tourismus, der Tourismus, Liebling, der Liebling. Um, when you see those two endings, you know that the article is there. Um, there are also some endings um, that have for words that have always D, the article D. Ungheit, Kaition, Schaft. If you are good at learning rules, then um, the best idea is to um, learn rules. You and at one point you will recognize U and G. Okay, this word has the ending U and G, so it must be D. And the last one is for das. So substantivierte Verben, what does that mean? If you turn a verb into a noun, then it's always das. So if you want to say smoking is bad, so you would turn das rauchen, turns into a noun, and then it's das. And diminutive, those of you who speak Spanish or Italian, I saw first that um, somebody joined from Spain, you will know diminutive because you have the same thing. Diminutive, here in German, the endings hen, line, or erl. You use it, you add those endings to any noun, and it makes it smaller. Or when you talk like that, it shows affection. So if you want to say mein Hund, my dog, but you say Hunderl, it just makes it cuter and shows affection. Also, it always has das as an article then. My advice. Um, Okay, the, like how are you going to learn those articles? The problem is you do need to learn those articles. So the German grammar doesn't work without the articles. You cannot say well, it doesn't really matter because later on when you know, when you learn about the different cases, dative, genitive, accusative, you need to know the article of the word, of a noun. Um, so unfortunately you cannot ignore the articles. So um, my advice is what I always um, say to my students, use colors. It doesn't matter what colors. So I chose blue, red, green. You can choose any colors, just stick to those colors. And once you learn a word, um, stick to those colors and write it down. Use three uh, different colored post-its. That works very well, especially when you learn about uh, furniture. Then you can stick it all over your apartment. And that way it's much easier for your brain to remember. Um, work with um, rooms, memory palace, work, um, create a memory palace. So um, what does that mean? So create three different rooms in your head. And um, so I, again, stick to your colors and then according to, to those colors, use um, the colors for your rooms in your head. So um, create a blue room, create a, 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 a red room or a green room. And then in every single room in your head, you put those words. I know it sounds a bit crazy and strange. It, I promise it does work. So in the blue room in your head, you put um, words like der See. Yeah. Um, see would be lake, masculine. Der Berg, Berg is mountain. It's blue sky in this room. Der Himmel is also masculine. 
in the red room, there might be a lady like um, who is touching a cow, like me, you see on the photo. So it would be die Frau, die Kuh. Or you put in a business lady because die Arbeit is also um, feminine. And in the green room, you put in a child, das Kind, das Gras, grass is green, um, das Brot. And for every single word you learn, every noun you learn, um, create a little story and put it in one of your rooms in your head. Um, I promise um, that really works very well. Okay, let's move on to a fun part. Um, compound nouns. Um, I call them Lego words because every little word is like a Lego brick and you can put it together and you create new words that way. Um, currently, the longest German compound noun is Kraftfahrzeughaftpflichtversicherung which basically translates to motor vehicle indemnity insurance. Um, yes, it is a very long word. Um, when you look at the individual words here, Kraft is a noun, Fahrzeug is a noun, Haft is a noun, Pflicht is a noun, and Versicherung is a noun. Um, when you see those long words in German, um, don't panic. Yeah, um, I know they're super long and people tend to just panic and say, oh my God, what does that mean? Um, if you already speak a little bit of German, what you should do is try and split it up. Try and figure out if there is one part of the word that um, you understand and then try and figure out the meaning. Always split it up. So you probably wonder now, um, well, if we have such a long word, how do we know what article does it get? So if we look at the last word here, that's Versicherung. So it doesn't matter what comes in front, it's still an insurance, yeah? The words in front just define what kind of insurance. So whenever you see such a long leg word, the word always gets the article of the last word. So die Versicherung. So it would be die Kraftfahrzeughaftpflichtversicherung. Um, there are lots of um, fun words. So Lego words are really the fun part about German um, because German sometimes is very logical as you can see here. So a snail for us, it's basically, um, a, so it looks like a snack. So we call a slug, a nacktschnecke because it is basically a snail, but it has no house. So we call it a naked snail. That's what nacktschnecke literally means, but that's the term for a slug. So when we look at the term flugzeug, it's a flying stuff. It, zeug means stuff. Um, we've got quite a few words that have Zeug in it. For example, fire stuff would be a lighter, Feuerzeug. The next one is, um, yeah, shoes for your hands, very logical. Um, Handschuhe, so um, gloves, uh, Handschuhe. Or an elevator, or there's also the German word lift, yes, but there is also the German word Fahrstuhl. And what does that mean? It is a driving chair, literally. And the last one, uh, Schildkröte. So a tortoise, a toad that has a shield. So it's a shield toad, a Schildkröte. Um, you find lots of words that you can combine with lots of other words. So um, Zahn is one of those. Zahn means tooth. And you can combine it with lots of other nouns and you create a new Lego word and you can create a new compound noun. So for example, Zahnspange, Zahnpaste, Zahnbürste, Zahnschmerzen. There would be a couple of more like Zahnarzt. Um, and there are many words like Zahn that you can actually combine with lots of other nouns. Um, here are some fun ones. You already know Hanshu, I told you those before. Um, but we've got also the beautiful word Zahnfleisch, tooth meat. Um, you can guess what that means. It refers to your gums. Or we have Kummerspeck. So um, during lockdown, lots of people put on some Kummerspeck or um, after your last uh, breakup, you probably put on some Kummerspeck, which literally translates to sorrow bacon. 
that refers to the weight you gain uh, due to um, emotional overeating. Um, and the last one um, that's, um, sorry to say, Ashgivai. So um, that's us, Antlers, Antler, basically. Um, if you were a teenager or if you were young during the 90s, you still know um, that sort of tattoo. It refers to the tattoo at your lower back. And um, in, we say in German that it looks like antlers and it's up your bottom. So Ashgivai. There are also lots of international Lego words. Um, like um, Doppelgänger, Schadenfreude, Wunderkind, Zeitgeist, Weltschmerz, Wanderlust. So those are all German words, um, but they are now used internationally, especially like in international newspapers. Okay, I would like to now move on to my German language quiz. I would love to, do, to hear your answers. Um, so maybe if you know the answer, you can write it in the chat. Um, so. Er ist, um, what does it mean when somebody in German says, er ist blau, he is blue. Okay, B, you all think B, yeah, um, that might be because of English, but it's actually he is drunk. So in, if in German somebody says he is very blue, it means he's very drunk, yeah. That's um, different to English, for example. Okay, um, the next one is uh, what does it mean when somebody in German says, er hat einen Vogel, he has a bird. He is funny, he is crazy, or he is tired. Yes, you all got that right, he is crazy. So he has a bird, it's usually combined with the gesture like this, yeah? So also very often used in a direct question like, hast du einen Vogel, do you have a bird? And then it's like this, especially when you're driving around Austria, then um, you get to see that a lot. Okay, and another um, um, phrase with an animal in it, er hat einen Kater, he's hungover, he's broke, he's in love. Um, so Carter literally translates to a male cat. It's not just a cat, but a male cat. Yes, you all got this right, hungover. So um, nobody's talking about your pet when they say Carter. It is hungover. So if you say, ich habe einen Carter, it means you're hungover. Um, we also even, we even have a lovely word that translates to hangover breakfast. So that would be Carter Frühstück, another nice compound, word, um, compound uh, noun. Okay, and the last one, uh, what does it mean when somebody in German says, das ist mir wurscht? So the ST is pronounced like scht. So das ist mir wurscht, that's sausage to me. That makes no sense. I don't care, that's great. Yeah, a few of you got it right. Good. I don't care. So das ist mir wurscht means I don't care. So if somebody says to you, would you like pizza or spaghetti for dinner? And you really don't care, you just say mir wurscht. So you can even shorten it and just say mir wurscht. Um, the reason for that is because if you look at an average sausage, it usually looks the same on both ends. So both is the same to you. That's where it comes from. Um, okay, um, let's give you a, a quick introduction to the Austrian um, culture. Of course, we don't have enough time to pr um, properly talk about the Austrian culture, but um, that's why I just decided to give you a humorous guideline, um, what to never say to an Austria. Have some of you already been to Austria? If um, yes, maybe let me know. And <laughs> I live here. Great. <laughs> yes, Klagenfurt, Graz. Yes, loved it. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. Been there once. Um, okay, what should you never say to an Austria? Yes, Vienna and Salzburg. Oh, great. Salzburg. So don't refer to an Austrian as a German. That's a very important rule. And I saw that somebody from Edinburgh joined, so you will understand um, what I mean. Because although Austria is a German-speaking country, and they're obviously quite a few similarities. Um, the, it's different, there are differences in culture um, and customs and values between the two countries. And similar to Scottish people, um, Austrians don't appreciate it when they call us Germans. Scottish people don't like it when you call them English. Um, we do love our German neighbors, 
but we do like it when you, we don't like it when you call us Germans. Um, okay, don't mention the sound of music. Um, it may be hard to believe because Sound of Music is such a popular film all over the world, but the film was a huge, complete flop in Germany and Austria. And no Austrian will ever admit um, that they've seen Sound of Music. Um, I have, because I live in Salzburg, that's the Sound of Music town. So Sound of Music everywhere. But generally, if you talk to an Austrian, they don't know what sound of music is all about. And no, we can't yodel like Maria, most of us at least. Do you speak proper German? Ouch, that question always really hurts. Um, even some of my students ask me, um, are we gonna learn proper German in this class? Um, so yes, we do speak proper German. Um, the Germans might disagree, <laughs> but anyway, um, the written language and the grammar is uniform across um, Germany and Austria and also Switzerland. There are specific words in Austria um, that are called Austriazismen and that are specifically used in Austria, but that's the same with American English and British English. So some use cookie, some use biscuit. And in Austria, for example, we use Erdäpfel, um, potato for Kartoffel um, or Paradiser for tomaten. Not everyone, but in some areas, yes. Um, there is a wide range of regional accents and dialects, but standard German is spoken and understood by pretty much everyone. Some people have to try a bit harder because they are so used to their to using their dialect and um, accent. And yes, we do have an accent, um, but um, if you speak standard German, everyone will understand you. And most people can also speak standard German. So yes, we do speak proper German in Austria. Do you like kangaroos? Yes, we do very much. But the only problem is that we are a small Alpine country and there are no kangaroos in Austria. You might think that's ridiculous. No, we. <laughs> if you are from a, such a small country like Austria, and if you travel um, internationally, people ask you that all the time because um, they simply mistake Austria for Australian. So you can get those t-shirts everywhere in Austria. May I call you Franz? No, you may not because unfortunately, um, well, unfortunately, but Austrians, uh, we have a tendency to consider it as rude if someone simply starts addressing us by our first name. So that's what we have um, surnames for. Um, first names are usually reserved for family and close friends. It, it goes that far that I just the other day witnessed an elderly lady ordering coffee at Starbucks. And when the lovely barista asked her for her name, she said, uh, uh, Frau Obermüller. So she gave the barista her surname. And uh, to make matters worse, we are obsessed with academic titles. Um, so if you know an Austrian who has an ag academic title, he or she will very much appreciate it if you use the academic title, unless you're close friends. Um, do you wear lederhosen and dindel? Yes, that's actually an acceptable, um, acceptable question because we do love our traditional clothes. Um, because we think that every woman looks beautiful in a dindel and every man looks very handsome in a lederhosen. And we do like to wear our traditional clothes um, on our numerous mini Oktoberfests and on our numerous um, town parties and we do very much appreciate it when um, people from abroad or when people from outside Austria wear our Dindl and Lederhosen. So if you come to a country, um, come to one of our town parties, if you come to a small Oktoberfest um, anywhere in Austria or Bavaria, put on your Lederhosen and Dindl, we very much appreciate it. Okay, and the last bit for today is going to be, um, I'm, I give you some general advice how to best learn German. I guess this is not just how to best learn German, but any other language. Um, so my tips and tricks are, you're not at school anymore. That is very important. Please forget everything you learned at school. Um, we all made bad experiences at school, or maybe not. But um, I very often have um, successful business people sitting in front of me and all of a sudden they feel like they are 14 years old again at school. Um, you're not at school anymore, so enjoy the process. You learn the language because you want to learn the language and that's it. 
find your motivation. That is extremely important. Um, by motivation, it's not enough to just say, okay, I want to speak to somebody in German. No, maybe you choose a German film, choose a German book. Um, maybe you there is an artist you really admire and then make it your goal to read the book in German or to listen to the song or to listen to the news in German. You need to find a clear, you need to find your personal motivation and you need to have a clear goal. The next one is, that might sound weird, but it's extremely important, get rid of your pride. Whenever you learn a language, um, you will make mistakes and you will say funny things and people might giggle or laugh even. It doesn't matter. And most people are always worried that they sound stupid, but no, the sheer fact that you are speaking in another language shows that you're not stupid at all. It is important that you get rid of your pride make mistakes, that's it, just laugh it off and um, move on. The next two you can combine because input is crucial and so make it a routine. So input is crucial, it's not enough if you practice like um, per week, like half for half an hour, that's not enough. When it comes to language learning, more is more. So make it a routine, um, so 10 minutes a day or like um, even a bit more if you have time but it's important that you get as much input as possible. And the last one is be patient. Um, I'm quite impatient myself, so I know what I'm talking about. Language learning just simply takes time. Be patient, be proud of um, how far you've come already and um, give yourself some time. So basically it's time and effort. There are no magical tricks. Language learning takes time and people appreciate the effort more than the accuracy. That's important to know. So generally, if you already um, speak some German or if you're currently in the process of learning the language, um, here are some websites um, that you might find useful because I always get asked um, if there are any websites. So the German project is a very good one. Um, you should have a look at that. Deutsch Perfect, um, it's a magazine actually. You can even buy it in shops, but they also have a website. Busu, you can try. Deutsche Welle is the one, this one I highly recommend. I even use it for my students. You find little videos, you find um, news in German. And even the BBC has quite a good um, page for le language ge learning German. If you wanna, if you already speak some German and if you wanna practice, then um, have a look at those websites like the Das Erste or ZDF, um, German TV. And BR is um, Bayerische Rundfunk. So if you want to get used to the Bavarian or Austrian accent, um, have a look at BR or ORF, that's the Austrian TV channel. And Servus TV is also the Austrian, that one is actually based in Salzburg. Um, you can watch some films or series and or watch the news. If you like listening to podcasts, um, Sprachbar is a, quite a good one. It's also by the Deutsche Welle. Um, Deutsche im Alltag is also Deutsche Welle, Radio Lingua, um, my daily phrase German. The Goethe Institute also has a podcast and some of you might already know Coffee Break German. Um, most of my students like that very much. Okay, I'd like to um, finish my presentation with one of my favorite quotes because I think it's very true. So every new language is like an open window that shows a new view of the world and expands your attitude towards life. Um, okay, so that's it basically. Um, I hope you enjoyed my presentation. If you do have any questions now, um, we still have a couple of minutes, so please feel free to ask. If you generally have any longer questions or if you wanna get in touch, please feel free to contact me. And I hope you um, start learning German now. I'm gonna be online for one or two minutes. If you have any other, if you have any questions, please just put it in the chat. Um, and how, Barbara, how many languages you speak? Um, I went to a language school, so I started to um, learn um, French, um, Italian, Spanish, and throughout university. When I studied in Scotland, I started speaking, uh, started learning Gaelic and Catalan, but unfortunately, I'm sure you all know that um, my brain currently, <laughs> my brain constantly deletes languages um, if I don't practice them. Um, 
unfortunately. Do you have any tips for learning the endings for all the different cases? Endings, you mean verbs or um, the articles? Um, the art, the, will you share slides with us? Um, oh yes, I need to, um, I, I'm sure I can do that, but I can sure I can share my slides along for a daily learning. Well, I would at least would say um, half an hour. Dankeschön, auf Wiedersehen. Enjoyed this webinar. Thank you for joining. Thank you very much for joining. What I should say in German, I love you. I love you is ich liebe dich. Um, Yes, so, but please feel free to just contact me if you have any long questions. I'm happy um, to um, share my slides with you. I'm going to see Uber Amagau Passion Play next year. Oh, that's great. Is there a vocabulary list? Oh, I'd have to look. What's the origin of Oberfest? Okay, um, I'm afraid, I wish I could answer all your question. But again, if there are any particular questions, please feel free to email me or find me on LinkedIn. Danke and Bier bitte. Yes, and sorry. <laughs> Have a beer. Prost. <laughs> Have a lovely weekend. Schönes Wochenende, all of you. Um, it was lovely meeting you online. And um, have a lovely weekend. Schönes Wochenende. Auf Wiedersehen. Ciao.